Our next guest sees a year-end rally coming, but beyond that, she's staying defensive. Let's bring in City Global Wealth's Kristen Bitterly. She's the head of North America Investments. Kristen, great to have you with us. Um, calling for a year-end rally, it's a very short time frame at, at this point, getting shorter and shorter. Um, it's amazing how the calendar goes by so quickly. But so uh, the next month and a half, so you're really being tactical about this. But beyond that rally, you actually see uh, 3,900 for the S&P 500. Yeah, so I, I think to be clear, we see we see a potential for a support to this rally, depending upon what the data tells us over the next couple of weeks, which are going to be pretty critical catalysts. That being said, what happens over the next couple of weeks does not change our, our base case for a recession at the beginning of next year. We believe that that's going to start in Q1 of 2023. And we actually see an earnings contraction of upwards of 10 percent in, in U.S. equities. That is clearly not priced in at these levels. That is something when you look at analyst consensus, we're anticipating about 5% growth. And so I think the overarching thesis is what could happen short term versus what's going to happen in 2023. You can't fight the Fed. And this idea that 7.7% on CPI and getting down to their 2% target and that a 50 basis point hike is somehow dovish. We just don't buy that. We believe that we're going to see continued tightening financial conditions. And until we see a material movement in inflation or a deterioration in employment, the Fed's not going to change course. It's Karen. Thanks for being on. So what's going to cause the rally then into December? I was wondering if you thought there's maybe tax loss selling for people who want to harvest losses and that that could weigh on the market for a while. And when you look at our targets, I mean, really, it's kind of right around where, where the S&P 500 is. So, again, it's kind of support argument for, for what we've seen. I think what you could see is ultimately light positioning, some market resilience, sentiment. If we do get, now, the December 13th date, I think, is really critical. Because if we do get a reduction in CPI, all of a sudden, you could see the market reacting very positively to that and carrying through to year end. On the flip side, given this light positioning, if CPI actually comes in higher, you're going to see the opposite. So if there's any type of retracement of some of the inflationary pressures, which we could see in airfares, which we could see in terms of energy pricing and, and that sector, then that would obviously do the opposite in terms of light positioning and light liquidity going into your end. So, Kristen, what is defensive in your view? You recently so went overweight fixed income, right? Is that it? We did. We did. So our portfolios right now, they're actually defensive and leaning into quality, both in terms of fixed income as well as equities. We are overweight fixed income, but within fixed income, we are overweight investment grade. We're overweight U.S. government munis. And to a certain extent, we have um, preferred exposure as well, just given the, the high yields there. On the equity side, we're looking at all of those sectors that basically can grow earnings throughout a recession. And so healthcare, pharmaceuticals, consumer staples, when you look at their growth rates during the past four recessions, they've been able to grow earnings anywhere from 5 to 8%. And so given the fact that our base case for 2023 is a recessionary environment and our equity portfolios, that's where we're positioned. What is, it, what is the risk reward, though, for being long um, into that CPI print? Because it sounds like you think that if CPI is hotter, we're going to see a, just a, a crush of a, of a sell-off. This is a great question, and I think one of the things that we've been doing in terms of this rally is actually using it as a way to position more defensively, rebalance portfolios. Another great strategy, just kind of looking, depending upon whether you're already invested or whether you're sitting in cash. So if you're already invested, using this rally to actually hedge. So there's that whole thing, sell the rips, buy the dips. But you can actually just simply, on this rally, put on some hedges going into year end. So that way you still have some exposure, but you're able to protect against a 10, 15% decline. If you're someone who's sitting in cash, another strategy, and we've seen a lot of volumes going into this over the past couple of weeks, and some of that activity actually drove the market higher last week, is just simply buying some upside. So buying some, some upside calls, call spreads in terms of being positioned in the market, but obviously mitigating some of that downside risk. Kristen, thanks. Kristen Bitterly. Thank you. A city. Dan, you're all about the selling the rips here. Yeah, I listen, I thought that was a really great discussion by Kristen because, again, it, it plays out a couple different scenarios that could happen. And, you know, the likelihood that, um, you know, we come in and we have hotter data, I mean, none of us knows because, like, even on that CPI print last week, you know, uh, it was explained away. It wasn't even that soft, right? But the market absolutely ripped. So, to me, I think the market is setting up for a rally, you know, a continuation of this rally. Guy's been saying 4,000. 
thousand, maybe you overshoot to, to forty one hundred. That's the declining two hundred day moving average. That's the downtrend in the S and P five hundred that's been in place since the all time highs the first week of this year. I think if you get there on anticipation of some sort of um, softer Fed action, I think you sell them and then you sell them again um, because I just don't think that with tighter financial conditions, even if the Fed is not going to be doing the seventy five basis points that they've been doing for the last four meetings, we're still going to have tighter financial conditions and still S&P earnings are not low enough for 2023. I liked your strategy of selling upside calls. Mm -hmm. If you are a long investor like I am, you kind of want to hang on to things. But I do think this run has been big. So I sold some GM calls, sold some JP Morgan calls, sold some URI calls just to take a little bit of money off the table. Yeah, I'm not nearly sophisticated enough to work in hedges, but I think it's impossible to try to time the market. And so for us as long-term investors, investing in the quality that she's talking about, what we're really looking at is really durable earnings businesses. So if I think of a Rollins, literally every year, 5%, 10% top line, EPS growth from share or purchase, good capital allocation, I think those are the types of businesses you want to own when it's an uncertain environment.